Okay, let's talk about the best CPU for 3D animation. Before we take a look at the hardware we should put in our best computer for animation, let's see how animation tasks actually use the hardware. Then later on I'll drop the um, list of CPUs that are great for 3D works. Now independent from 3D software, when I animate I usually do some of the following. I pose rigged characters, set keyframes, adjust animation curves, move um, objects around um, for keying on new frames. I also do a lot of camera movements. All of these processes have one thing in common, which is actively tweaking things inside um, the software and expecting an immediate um, visual feedback. Now I don't push a button and wait for two minutes while walking around, you know, no. I expect the viewport or menus or other user interface elements in my software to update right away. This seems obvious, but there are a lot of other tasks in the production pipeline of an animation film that work very differently. Think of rendering, simulation, texture baking or encoding to name a few. These are processes which don't actively interact with the computer but mainly runs tasks on its own until it is finished. One might ask why is it so? Why is it so? This leads us to single core performance. Here's what um, single core performance means. Single core performance dependent tasks are tasks that can be parallelized. Modern processes that are responsible for calculating almost everything you do on the computer usually have more than one so-called core. And this is how it looks on a CPU with four cores. Cores are individual parts of a CPU that can calculate a given task. In a computer for animation, we will want a CPU with extremely fast cores. As the tasks we are dealing with most of the time are tasks that can only be calculated by one core at a time. So having a high core count wouldn't benefit us since the remaining cores will just be doing nothing. The main reason why animation tasks can be parallelized that well is that the underlying objects that are being animated usually are rigged, deformed, driven by scripts or otherwise dependent on the hierarchical order that has to be processed one after another without being able to outsource some steps um, to other cores. Let's make an example. The 3D character that you are animating usually consists of a mesh. This mesh is deformed by a rig. The rig is driven by control objects. The deformed mesh might also have face control and some kind of um, soft body simulation for jiggly parts such as the belly. And this is a pretty ordinary character. I haven't been gotten into hair collision, dynamic IK chains, muscle collision and so on yet. All of these deformers and rigs all have to be stepped through a predefined order until the resulting mesh can be correctly displayed um, for that um, frame. I can't instruct some of my CPU cores to calculate the texture or shading or hair collision if I haven't yet calculated the basic um, body animation parts. This is why only a single core has to um, painstakingly calculate all the hierarchical steps one after the other. This can only be accelerated if um, the CPU core, which at this moment does all the work, is as fast as possible and also has a high clock speed. Now lots of other tasks can be highly parallelized, such as rendering. Rendering images can be perfectly parallelized and you can make full use of all your CPU cores. More CPU cores equals faster rendering. One might ask, can't you have one CPU that has a high clock speed and lots of cores? just so you can work fast and render fast? The answer is no. Unfortunately, there is a trade-off between core clocks and core counts. This is because a CPU has a specific thermal limit and power limit that it cannot exceed. And since every core and every extra clock increase needs more power and make the CPU runs hotter, it makes sense if there is a trade-off. Fortunately, Intel and AMD have thought of a way to compensate for this, at least to a certain degree. Both CPU brands build a feature into their CPUs called the Turbo Boost and Turbo Core. This feature automatically overclocks the core that are being used as long as the power draw and thermal limitations are not exceeded. For animation, this means you might have a CPU with 6 cores, but whilst animating, um, you only need 1-2 to cores. The CPU now automatically overclocks these 1-2 to cores that are in use but downclocks or stops all other clocks. This happens so fast that you won't even notice it at all. 
but you will notice that the cores you are using um, are much faster okay so here are a few cpus that i would recommend to people who do 3d animation These CPUs are all excellent for animation. They have a high um, boost clock and will give you a snappy active work experience. The AMD Ryzen 5 5600X and the AMD Ryzen 9 5900X are the performance um, winners for me when it comes to offering lots of cores, speeding up your animation and also quicker rendering. All these at a lower cost. Many of the higher end CPUs are more expensive or have a lot of cost but slow animation and rendering. If you are a professional 3D artist then I would suggest you go in for an AMD Threadripper 3970X um, 3.7 GHz with a thermal boost of 4.7 GHz and 32 cores. It's a high end um, level CPU that costs a lot. So if you have the money then go for it. Okay, if you love this video, kindly don't forget to give me a thumbs and also don't forget to subscribe. Until my next video, peace out.